Yeah, there's two really interesting things about the Alex Honnold story. One is that he's, he's a high sensation seeking, thrill seeking individual, but rather than taking the path of, the path that a lot of people who have high sensation seeking personalities take, which is towards things that are gonna have really negative outcomes in their life, like drug and alcohol addiction, or joining a gang, or dangerous uh, sexual behaviors. He focused all of his energy into something that is as thrilling as can be, you know, climbing without a rope, but which also forced him to put constraints on his own behavior. I mean, you can't play fast and loose at all with ropeless rock climbing. So he picked something that was thrill-seeking, but also required the maximum of control. And the theory is that more high sensation seekers could possibly be directed from more dangerous behaviors that are gonna have long-term long negative outcomes to things like high-risk outdoor sports, where at the same time that you get the thrills, you're learning how to, uh, how to control yourself in high-risk environments and you know, set goals and all of those sorts of things that have really positive outcomes. It turns out he has quite an unusual brain in terms of his ability to handle anxiety, but he also maximized what he could do with his brain. He had this gift, but he trained it and trained it, uh, started climbing ropeless, and just did a really high volume of easy, relatively safe ropeless rock climbs before he got a little more dangerous and a little more dangerous and really built to the maximum of what he could achieve. And that's something that any of us can do with, with our minds. Some of us are going to be more anxious than others, but all of us can improve our relationship with anxiety and become less fearful about the things that trouble us. You know, a lot of media people were wanting to talk to him. So I felt like I needed to come to him with a, with a fresh idea that he might, you know, he might be genuinely interested in participating in. And, and he was. I mean, as soon as I spoke to him, he's a very approachable guy. And he, he said, sure, you, you, know, you want to take a look at my brain? A lot of people are asking me the same question that you want to ask, which is, am I wired in, in some different way? Uh, am I crazy? <laughs> am I, is there something missing in my brain? And I, he was ready to try and look for answers to those questions. Well, little did I know when I was interviewing him uh, that he had this plan for his greatest climb. Uh, so I interviewed him just, it turns out it was just at the start of his one year of preparations leading up to his climb of El Capitan, which is a 3,000 foot high cliff in Yosemite and probably the best known uh, most visually striking cliff in the world. That was all completely secret when he was talking to me. I asked him about it and he's like, mm, you know, thinking about, <laughs> thinking about that, but, but uh, really wasn't letting anything slip. So a year after, uh, after I was talking to him, he did the climb that will be his greatest climb. And at the end of that, he, he kind of said that he didn't think there was much more he could achieve in terms of ropeless rock climbing and he's now directing his climbing energy towards uh, harder and harder roped rock climbs to see what he can achieve in that somewhat safer arena. Yeah, I mean, I don't talk about it in the story, but I, most of the reason I was interested in this story was that I was a really anxious teenager. And uh, when I was 15 years old, I was looking at a magazine rack and I saw a, a cover magazine cover that featured a ropeless rock climber. It wasn't Alex Honnold, but it was, it was a previous generation uh, ropeless rock climbing superstar. I lived in a community that didn't have a lot of rocks and didn't have a rock climbing community, but something about that image really grabbed me. And uh, I became a rock climber myself, and I even climbed um, ropeless at times. What I discovered was that I was too fearful to keep pushing my limits in ropeless rock climbing and to this day I, I do rock climbing but I've, I've done it with ropes for years and I've always wondered well why was I not able to push you know so so far in ropeless rock climbing and why are some people able to do so and uh, so Alex's story had always been really fascinating to me and and it was uh, it was a self-exploration at the same time that I was trying to sort out what was what was going on in his head.